Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to educate and debate specific stock investment ideas. Today, oh boy, today we're going to talk about Canadian oil and gas. Is it safe to invest in the sector? Will this video be the first YouTube video to get a negative number of views? It feels extremely possible given how bad sentiment is. Specifically, we're going to take a look at white cap resources. It's an intermediate producer listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange. I thought it was interesting to look at the sector given how badly beaten up it is and white, white cap in particular has a 9% dividend yield, is operating within cash flow, meaning their payout ratio including capex is less than 100% and it currently trades at 2.3 times funds from operations. As always, this video will look at the business, the financial results, key considerations for investors and conclude with bull bear and base case scenarios. Let's jump into it. So white cap, most of their, their assets in production are in Alberta and Saskatchewan, as you can see here. Uh, they currently produce a little over 70,000 barrels a day uh, and have about eight years of drilling inventory. And I guess the one other point that I'd add is as of right now, it's about 85% liquids as opposed to gas. Historically, white cap has actually put up uh, pretty strong operational results. You can see production here uh, growing quite nicely over time, currently expected to exit 2019 average production of 71,000 barrels a day. Reserves have also gone up quite nicely, 19% kegger. And then funds flow has been a little bit more variable, uh, but has grown over time and expect about 700 million of funds flow uh, in 2019. In their annual information form, you can find uh, the reserves data and the engineering study. I guess not much to mention here on the details. You can check it out if you're interested, but I did want to point out that the NPV of their asset base at a 10% discount uh, based on the engineer's pricing model is $5.5 billion, as you can see here below. And that compares to a current enterprise value of, of a little less than $3 billion. So, depending on whether you agree with the pricing assumptions made by the engineering firm, obviously there's a huge disconnect between the value of the assets as presented uh, in the AIF and the market value. So just wanted to point that out. And now let's look at the stock price chart. Oh boy. Uh, so over the last five years, this has been a uh, great place for skiers. It's been a nice steep slope, uh, but a very tough place for investors. You can see that uh, white cap traded at a high of around 1750 back in late 2014. And it hasn't been a straight ride down, but it, it's been a tough slog over the last five years. White cap currently trading at $3.93. I also uh, included WTI prices over the last five years, the average price for the year. Just to show one thing that I think is interesting is in 2014, WTI of $93. Um, 2015 and 16 were very difficult period for energy investors with WTI dropping below 50. But WTI's bounced back and, and last year at $65, what's interesting to me is that you would have thought that the stock price would have recovered, but instead um, white caps continued to fall and uh, trading essentially at 10 year lows. The good news, if there is good news, just go to the next slide here. Is that white cap is not alone. Uh, so I also wanted to plot out the last five years for a couple of Canadian peers that are well known. Suncor on the one hand, uh, down 12% over the five year period. And then Crescent Point uh, has had a really tough go of it and, and their issues have been well documented. But shareholders are down 90% over the five year period. Um, so. Suncor obviously has a much more diversified business model. They've got gas stations, downstream assets, they've got refining assets, um, and a much more uh, resilient business model as compared to a pure producer, uh, but still hasn't been a great place for investors to be. And then more on the pure production side, it's just been, it's just been a, tough, a tough sector for investors over the last five years. If we jump into financial information now, white cap, I believe this is on page 17 of their MD&A for 2018. You can see some of the highlights. 
and we'll go through them quickly. Revenue up pretty nicely over the last few years, 670 million in 2016 to 1.5 billion in 2018. Funds flow as well has gone up quite nicely. Uh, and funds flow per share as well, which is interesting. So $1.13 in 2016, increasing to $1.67 in 2018. And it, it naturally, as an investor, you wouldn't expect the stock chart that we just saw uh, to represent a business that's been growing their, their cash flow per share. Net income uh, shows a loss in 2017. They took some impairments uh, it, on, their, on their assets in the last couple of years, which has reduced earnings, but not on a cash basis. And you can see here their capital expenditures, expenditures on PP&E. And I guess the last point that I'll mention is net debt and common shares outstanding have increased over the last couple of years, largely a result of some asset acquisitions that they made. So you can see here property acquisitions of 970 million in 2017 and 630 million in 2016. And so they used a combination of debt and equity to fund those acquisitions. Netbacks. Uh, Netbacks pretty key uh, operating metric for oil and gas producers and in white caps case I've just included the last couple of years here. It's a snip from their financial disclosure. I think the first point to mention is and we'll compare everything to WTI because it's the standard and it's the easiest to compare against um, but white cap does not receive uh, WTI pricing on its on its crude. In fact, in 2018, it received 55.96, which is a Canadian amount, and that compares to average WTI prices of $64.77. And 77 cents, sorry. So if we convert that 55.96 to US dollars, $43.05 compares to WTI pricing of 64.77. So that means that white cap has a differential of $21.72. So they get on average close to $22 a barrel less for their production um, than the w WTI. And that's an issue that's well documented in Canada that many of the producers, whether it's uh, egress issues and their ability to get their, their crude to the most economical uh, refineries and locations, or otherwise just the, just the types of crude itself, um, White cap is not generating anywhere close to um, the WTI price on its uh, on its production. And then the other thing that I'll point out here, the operating net back of 29.33, if you actually uh, reduce it by a few of the other corporate items, turns into a funds flow net back of 26.29 after deducting GNA and interest expense per barrel of oil. And I think that's uh, a more accurate or more representative measure to look at. So for white cap. On average, in 2018, each barrel of oil production generated $26 of cash flow. CapEx. <clears throat> so with an oil and gas producer, um, your production will not uh, just stay consistent uh, going forward. It's not a recurring revenue business. You need to con continuously invest in it. And as a producer, you can either be growing production, uh, maintaining production, or or your production will be declining if you're not spending sufficient uh, dollars in, in CapEx to uh, build out and drill and complete your wells. So in 2018, 371 million was spent on drilling and completions compared to 300 million last year, or sorry, in 2017. You can see that the company has really slowed down on making property acquisitions, uh, not much in the way of new property acquisitions in 2018. And for 2019, they provide guidance to investors of $450 million of, of CapEx, and they expect that to drive production growth of 5 to 8%. So a fairly substantial amount of CapEx needs to be spent each year to maintain and, and then grow production over time. Guidance for white cap. Um, they've provided guidance on 2019, and I've summarized a few of the key points um, what they're really looking to do is prove out an organic growth model uh, and ability to operate within funds flow. So don't expect any large property acquisitions. Um, what they're really looking to do is operate the, the assets they have um, 
they've guided to 450 million of capex like i said which is expected to provide some production growth five to eight percent and based on their forecast pricing in in their model and their guidance uh, 700 million dollars of funds flow less 450 million of capex less 139 million for dividends leaves about 100 million uh, of excess cash flow that they can use to reduce debt and currently they have about 1.2 billion of debt and so they would be uh, bring that down somewhat uh, through the year so that's the quick background and I guess just quickly on, on the debt uh, we've got about 1.2 billion of debt which rep represents a little under two times cash flow so not nothing uh, but they do have um, a reasonable balance sheet in the sector. So if we take a step back and think about the business and some of the key considerations for the stock, well, let's start with the strengths. What would make us interested uh, in white cap? In the first one that jumps out at you that is extremely clear, and this is contrarian, obviously, uh, it's valuation. The stock price is trading at 10-year lows. You have to go back to early 2010 uh, before white cap was trading at lower levels and it's trading at these low levels while the free cash flow is still positive at current oil prices current oil prices right now around $55 a barrel so the stock hasn't been this cheap for 10 years it pays a 9% dividend which we have down here while you wait and currently, at current oil prices, it's free cash flow positive. So they're able to generate cash flow to fund their capital expenditures, grow their production at low to mid single digits, pay out the 9% dividend, and, and this all works at current oil prices. And the third point is a relatively strong balance sheet, which we just talked about. 1.8 times net debt to funds flow is, you know, not zero debt, um, but unless oil prices were to decrease materially, the leverage on the balance sheet, there's no near-term maturities either. Um, it should be a reasonable leverage levels from which to operate. Risks to investors, and this is the longest list of, of on the page here. Commodity price um, and declining oil demand over time. So for sure, if you're making an investment in, in white cap, uh, you, you know, the price of WTI and, and oil in general is going to drive the returns. And from a declining oil demand perspective, one point that I want to make is that global energy crude demand over time continues to grow. So currently there's 100 million barrels per day of crude demand globally. And over the last 10 years, that's grown from about 84 million. So while there's lots of discussion about moving away from fossil fuels into cleaner energy sources, and there is a potential in time to see oil demand uh, slow and potentially uh, decrease. As of right now, oil demand continues to grow at a 1%-ish rate per year. Uh, I think it's a very important point for investors to note right now. Second point would be supply, uh, increased supply. And we know the shale production that's come on in the US over the last five to 10 years has added a lot of supply to the market. The U.S. has gone from a net importer of oil to a net exporter of oil. At 10 million barrels of oil per day, roughly, the U.S. produces right now. So of the global uh, oil demand of 100 million barrels a day, the U.S. is now 10% of that. And that's been a big change over the last 10 plus years. Egress issues for Canadian producers, white cap operating in Canada. Um, obviously needs to get their crude to the end market and this is well documented so I won't get into it too much on this video um, but lack of pipeline exit capacity or economical means to get their crude to the refineries in the most economical uh, endpoints is a risk to to white cap and we haven't mentioned this in the video but decommissioning liability as a Canadian producer you're required to put aside funds uh, over time and re reclaim the, the land that you've been working on and bring it back to its natural state. So White Cap has a liability of $725 million that's on their balance sheet. Again, these liabilities are in the distant future, out 20, 30, 40 years, 
uh, but I just wanted to note that for investors. Decline rates, I believe these are relatively low for white cap, but when we talk about the amount of capex that needs to be invested to maintain production, certain assets uh, decline more quickly than others, and just another risk, um, obviously, that white cap would need to continually invest uh, from a CapEx perspective to maintain production. And lastly, FX risk. Uh, price of oil is largely based in, in US dollars and white caps operations are in Canada, pay their employees in Canadian dollars. So any sharp movements in the foreign exchange between the CAD and the USD um, could be a risk for white cap. So what are the key drivers for the stock? We'll start with the oil price. And that's that's the insight you pay for here at Ostrich Investing. The oil price, uh, surprising absolutely no one's going to be the biggest key driver for the stock. WTI averaged $65 in 2018 and currently at around $55. So oil's come off recently. And fundamentally, if, you, if you're going to make an investment in white cap, you'd want to believe in higher oil prices over time. And we'll run in a couple of sensitivity uh, pieces of sensitivity analysis on the next slide that just show what different oil prices might mean for white cap. Number two, global demand growth. We talked about it a little bit more in the risk section, but is oil demand going to continue to grow as it has over the last 10 years, or are we going to reach a tipping point when clean energy, renewable energy sources uh, are going to reduce the world's reliance on fossil fuels and actually bring global demand growth uh, to a negative uh, negative levels. Third, global macro trade with commodity like oil. Any geopolitical news can affect uh, the commodity price. Very difficult to predict, in, in my opinion, but just something to be cognizant of. Number four, the differentials versus WTI for white cap. So it was about $22 for white cap last year. You'll see in the next slide when we do some sensitivity analysis how big of a driver, essentially, the, the oil price and the differential for white cap are going to be the two key drivers for its cash flow and, and ultimately its, uh, its stock price. And then lastly, investor interest. We saw the stock price chart over the last five years. It has been a brutal place to be for investors. And right now, particularly the Canadian energy sector, has as close to zero interest from investors as you can imagine. And so while... The, you might see some positive uh, moves in the oil price and resulting cash flow for the business. Are investors going to care? When are investors going to return to uh, being interested in the Canadian oil and gas sector? So before we jump into our bull, bear, and base case scenario, just wanted to throw up a little bit of sensitivity analysis that I did on the stock. As I mentioned before, looked at various WTI prices and differentials for white cap on the vertical axes and ran through what that would mean for both their free cash flow yield in 2019 and their funds flow from operation. And so what you can see here, roughly at $55 and about a $20 differential, um, they're going to be fine. They're going to be producing about $500 million of, of funds from operations. They've guided to $450 million of CapEx. Uh, they could flex that down and not grow production and most likely pay the dividend. Uh, so no real issues there at oil of 55 and up. But what you can see is that as oil starts to get down into the 40s, particularly if we look at 45 as an example, if differentials continue to be you know, in the $20 range, uh, white cap's going to struggle to continue to invest in their properties and potentially pay the dividend. So I just wanted to put this analysis up here. I guess the last point is, and, and we'll see it in our bull, bear, and base case scenario, but if the WTI moves up, you can see huge impact on cash flow um, and free cash flow yields here on uh, the top part of the chart. So probably not going to surprise anyone. The cash flow for white cap is going to be hugely sensitive to movements in the oil price as well, the differential and price that white cap receives relative to WTI. So with that, let's look at our illustrative bull, base, and bear case scenarios. Reminder that this is not exhaustive. Uh, it's meant to be illustrative in nature just to show you a couple of different examples. And 
really comes down to your view on oil price as well as the potential for investors in Canada to return to the sector. You know, are investors going to care again? So on the bull side, we looked at $70 WTI with a $10 differential. That's going to produce funds from operation of almost $1.4 billion. Um, $450 million in CapEx leaves you with over $900 million of free cash flow, so a ton of free cash flow. Note, in a scenario like this, the company would, would likely increase CapEx to drive production growth. I haven't really factored that in uh, at this stage. We've just kept the, the $450 million CapEx flat, uh, but I just want to point that out for investors. And at four times FFO multiple, that implies a share price of $13.19. That's 238% upside and a free cash flow yield of 17%. Uh, so a ton of upside if you believe in higher prices and lower differentials. Um, and that's what you'd expect given how beaten up the stock price in the sector is. If, if we were to return to more attractive pricing, there should be some pretty huge upside in the stock price. And I think the numbers bear it out here. Base case, $60 WTI, so not too far from where we are today. $17 differential, again, not too far from where their differentials have been. Um, that's going to produce FFO of $777 million. Take off your $450 million for CapEx. That leaves you with free cash flow of over $300 million. And that is sufficient to cover the dividend at around a 45% payout ratio. So very healthy business financials. Your your 9% dividend yield is more than covered. If we look at a valuation of three times FFO, not uh, not a stretch, excuse me, valuation multiple by any stretch, um, that implies a share price of $5.64, which is upside of 45% to the current share price and a free cash flow yield of 14%. So at a base case, which isn't too far from where we are today, um, it, pretty healthy financial and cash flow metrics and, and pretty strong upside in the share price at a very conservative multiple. The bear case, and this was the toughest one for me, and I don't think I've really come to a full conclusion, so I'm, I'm definitely open to your thoughts here. Um, obviously, as the oil price goes down, free cash flow is going to turn negative, and so what I was really trying to think through is what are the value of these assets in a blowdown scenario, i.e. little to no capex. I'd really probably need uh, to ask a few questions of management here in terms of what are the minimum capex levels that they could um, that they could sustain and, and actually have production uh, production decreasing over time, um, but in a lower oil price environment, you know, what could they get away with and how would those the stream of cash flows look? I don't think I've been able to sort of pinpoint it, uh, but it, if you look at $50 oil and a $25 differential, so, so very high differential level, that's going to produce $155 million of, of funds from operation. What would CapEx be in that scenario? What would the resultant free cash flow be? Uh, most likely negative, um, most likely a dividend cut implied share price of, I don't really know, uh, again, uh, wasn't able to really feel strongly in my bear case scenario here, but I've put in $2 as a, as a downside of 49%. If you have any thoughts on the bear, bear side, uh, bear case scenario, sorry, please leave it in the comments below. We'd love to have a discussion around that. So that's a wrap on our video for white cap. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Are oil prices going up or down? Will investors come back to the Canadian energy sector anytime soon? Uh, please don't unsubscribe to our channel because I profiled an oil and gas stock. Uh, we'll be back soon with more content, but until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.